G'day, Troy Dean here from WP Elevation and welcome to episode 72 of the WP Elevation podcast. We should kind of call this a vodcast, shouldn't we? Because it's a video podcast. That's right, if you're just listening to this podcast and you haven't been aware, this is actually a video podcast. You can get on over to wpelevation.com and check out the videos of me interviewing the guests and our funky new studio where we're shooting the intros and the outros. Hey, this week, our feature guest is actually three guests. We have Robbie McCullough, Billy Young, and Justin Booser, who are Beaver Builder, and they're also Fastline Media. So Fastline Media is their client services business, and Beaver Builder is their new WordPress page builder product, which is getting all sorts of rave reviews and lots of hot press at the moment. This episode, if you've ever thought about migrating, uh, or not migrating, but kind of transitioning away from client services into being a product business, there's lots of good stuff in this interview about some of the potential challenges that you might face, but also some of the rewards and some of the benefits of being a product business. Uh, this episode, we are giving away two pro memberships of Beaver Builder. They are valued at $199 each. Well, we're not actually giving it away. The nice guys at Beaver Builder have sponsored those prizes, so stick around for details on how you can enter that. Uh, Stay with us, let's elevate. This is the WP Elevation Podcast. Helping WordPress consultants elevate. This episode of the WP Elevation podcast is brought to you by Video User Manuals, which if you don't know by now, is a plugin that you can buy for $1 for your first 30 days, and you can install it in your client's websites, as many clients as you like, and it will install over 80 video tutorials in their WordPress dashboard to teach them how to use WordPress to manage their content. It'll teach them how to use WP SEO by Yoast if it's installed, It'll teach them how to use WooCommerce if you switch those videos on. And it will also teach them how to configure, set up, and read their Google Analytics account. Pretty neat, huh? Of course, you can white label it, put your own logo on it. You can turn off any of the videos or entire sections of videos. You can add your own custom videos for things like testimonials or staff profiles. You can save your master settings so that you can just very quickly deploy it to client websites in the future. Uh, What else can you do? You can do all of this for a dollar for your first month and then it's $24 a month after that for unlimited client sites. It's ridiculously cheap. We have to put our price up and it's only a matter of time before we do. So if I was you, I'd get on over now and secure your copy while you can. Uh, that is videousermanuals.com or you can check it out at wpelevation.com slash vum and have a look at a, a uh, funny little video my wife and I made about pretending to be a WordPress consultant handing over a website to a client and showing her how the plugin works. It's pretty neat. Anyway, this uh, episode we are talking to the three guys from Fastline Media who have built the Beaver Builder Page Builder plugin for WordPress. And I know what you're asking, why do we need another page builder? Well, you'll have to watch this episode to learn or listen to this episode to find out why. There are some key distinctions about Beaver Builder over some of the other page building solutions on the market. So stick around and learn about why it's different and also learn what it means to make a transition from being client services into a product business and some of the challenges that that uh, throws up. Uh, they're also giving away a copy, two copies of the Beaver Builder Pro membership which is valued at $199 each and we'll give you details about that a little bit later in the interview. But right now let's go and meet Robbie McCullough, Justin Busa and Billy Young from Beaver Builder. G'day, Troy Dean from WP Elevation, and I'm very pleased to have with me about 143 guests on today's episode of the podcast. No, I'm kidding. I've only got three. I've got Billy Young. I have Justin Busa and Robbie McCullough from Beaver Builder. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Great. Troy. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for joining us. us. This, is the, this is the most, the biggest, uh, biggest audience we've ever had on a podcast, so it's kind of exciting and a little bit scary. (laughs) (laughs) We'll try not to break the internet. (laughs) Yeah, fingers are crossed. I know, if I'm involved, don't worry, we will break it, there's no doubt. Um, (laughs) All right, hey, for those that don't know, Beaver Builder is an awesome drag and drop WordPress page builder and more. We're gonna talk more about that in a moment, uh, of course. Uh, But the guys have very kindly offered uh, two pro memberships of Beaver Builder up for prizes uh, in this week's episode. They are valued at $199 each. So for details on how to enter that competition so that you could potentially win a pro membership to Beaver Builder, stick around and listen to the interview and we'll give you details a little bit later on. All right, now there are three of you, so this is gonna be very interesting, but I'm gonna go from left to right. So um, Billy, before we start talking about all things WordPress and start geeking off about page builders, when you were a kid, what did you wanna be when you grew up? I would have to say a fireman. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> totally typical, right? But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's usually fireman or astronaut or soccer player. You know? <laughs> Justin, what about you? Uh, baseball player. Oh, there we go. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Amer- American, right? So not soccer player. Yeah. You know, one of the other sports. But yeah, I remember too uh, when we were looking at, uh, you know, thinking about that. And uh, my grandma has my thing, you know, you write in elementary school about what you want to be, you know, uh-huh. up on her wall still. And and it, sure enough, it said baseball player. And I was like, I can't believe you still have that. <laughs> <laughs> and let me guess, Robbie, you want to be an astronaut, right? <laughs> And uh, yeah, an astronaut pirate actually. Is that an astronaut pirate? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I honestly, I had no idea what I wanted to be. When I was, I was trying to think of something, and I don't, I don't think I knew at all what I wanted to do then, and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. So it's <laughs> nothing's really changed. Good answer. Um, when did you? When did you? Do, I mean, and feel free just to chime in, whoever here, no particular order. But when did you discover the internet and think, okay, there's something in this, and it's not just for you know, gaming and porn that we might actually be able to make a career out of this. Not that I'm saying that, you know, you know, please, no judgment here. (laughs) (laughs) Well, as far as a career, it was probably late teens, early 20s. Um, I had a a good friend that went through the Y Combinator program, Uh um, which is an incubator here in Silicon Valley. And at the same time, I was kind of discovering... uh, open source software and kind of, you know, I had a couple of websites that I frequented often and I kind of thought this is, you know, they were community forums and I thought this is a cool, you know, this is really cool. I'd love to have one of these of my own. How do I do that? And uh, yeah, I kind of put those, those two. I watched him kind of grow his business and we were kind of joking like I saw him after not, you know, seeing him for a couple of months. I said, oh, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I'm trying to make some money with this internet thing. I said, oh, I'm kind of trying to do the same thing. Like, <laughs> how, did you, how did you three guys meet? Uh, me and Billy were working together as Fastline Media for a couple years, and then we hired Robbie, and then Robbie just became indispensable, and we came up with Beaver Builder, and we all just three partnered up. So uh, me and Billy go back like 10 plus years. You know, the typical story that we like to joke about is that, you know, he was the manager of the club that my band was playing at <laughs> um, <laughs> before either of us was working on the internet, like, you know, aside from, you know, hacking around and whatnot um and yeah you know five years ago in march yeah it's coming up um he i was freelancing and he wanted to get out of his corporate gig and saw that i was looking for someone and said hey let's do it together and we're like all right just jumped in you know feet first and uh, didn't look back and then robbie was actually the first person we ever interviewed um <laughs> and so that kind of just worked out <laughs> and so had- we got how did you guys find each other, Robbie? How did you how did you find these guys? Was it just online, like in forums and stuff? Craigslist, actually. I was nice. looking for uh, I was looking for a real job, and uh, was, <laughs> you know, trying to take some of the you know web and and computers and everything. It was always a hobby of mine, but I decided to try and you know quit my my customer service job and and do something do something a little bigger. And and the other, these guys were the first job posting I found that I was like, oh, this looks you know this looks good. It's in my neighborhood. I'm gonna go and. Uh, Funny, like I was their first interviewee, and they were my first, like, you know, first company too. It, it must have been fate, because yeah, like, yeah, looking back on it, we all we got we got pretty lucky, I think. <laughs> cool. Oh yeah. And and so for those that don't know, Fastline Media is a client services business, right? You guys building websites for clients, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. So was WordPress always the thing that you were using, or did that did that kind of come once you tried a few other solutions out? Uh, not at first. Uh, I mean, it has been since Robbie uh, came on. Um, but before we even started Fastline, I was doing the whole Joomla, Drupal thing. I know Robbie's hacked around on different stuff too, even before he was with us. Um, but once we got into WordPress, uh, we redid our website. We, we did our initial website in 2010, um, around that time on Joomla. And then we were like, this website sucks. We just kind of, it was quick. Um, and we spent, you know, a couple months uh, rebuilding our website on WordPress. It was probably one of the real first WordPress, like, custom themes we had built, too. Um, and then from there on out, we just never looked back. I mean, it was so much easier than some of the other systems out there. And, um, you know, and where it is today from where it was even then, it's just amazing. So have you, have you found over the last couple of years that there's been um, less resistance from clients using WordPress or, or do you still find that it's a bit of a hard sell to actually get clients head around using an open source platform? 
I don't think most clients even care what they're using. I mean, they're looking to us for the recommendation. Um, you know, if we say WordPress is it, most clients will say, okay, it sounds great. Uh, you know, depending on the client, though. We, we just had a, a client that's a security company. Uh -huh. And they're like, yeah, you know, I mean, for some of the claims that we're going to be making here soon, we can't have WordPress as our, our uh, you know, homepage. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I can see, I can see that, you know. But though that's also a different type of client. But yeah, I think for the most part, um, you know, they're fine with WordPress, definitely. And um, and so so let's talk about let's we're, we're going to get to Beaver Builder and all the cool stuff, but I, want, I still want to talk about client services a little bit. I want to talk about the transition that you've made from client services into building a product. Um, so how do you thinking about client services? How do you guys split the roles? What do you actually do in the business from a client services point of view? Well, we all um, we all have experience, uh, you know, doing doing web development work and design. Um, we all kind of have our strengths, but all three of us will take on projects and, and usually work with a client. Um, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes we'll involve each other in kind of do uh, group projects in that. But, but yeah, we, we all have a pretty good grasp of uh, technology and web and design so we can work with a client from kind of start to finish. Um, then yeah, depending on on everyone's schedules and everyone's you know commitments, sometimes we'll we'll take over for each other and jump in here or there. But um, yeah, we all kind of we're all kind of doing the same thing in the same place. Okay, so you don't have like a you know specific account management designer developer. You kind of just manage your own relationships with your own clients, but it all comes under the one banner, yeah. Yeah. Yes and no. We we we're all kind of, we're kind of jack of all trades, but we do um, kind of you know I'd say Billy's kind of our operations guy, and he handles a lot of the uh, you know the business stuff, if you will. And and Justin Justin's a hotshot developer. You know, whenever something that's particularly development heavy comes through, he's usually the one to take that. And then I I kind of lean towards the the design side. Um, but again, yeah, we we can all kind of we can all do it all, and with each other's feedback and help, uh, we all kind of take take a take a role in all of those pieces. And and thinking specifically about Fastline Media, how, what's what's the elevator pitch, so to speak? How do you differentiate yourself from any other web dev agency out there? If someone says, "Well, you know, what do you do?" Oh, you know, we work at Fastline Media. We build websites for clients. I say, "Oh, you and everyone else. What's different about you guys?" How do you answer that question? Well, recently, the the big differentiator has been Beaver Builder. Uh, uh -huh. We get to deliver websites that you you know, without a whole lot of tech uh, savviness, you can jump in and, and make the changes and edits yourself. Um, up until then, it, yeah, I guess it varies a lot. I mean, I wish there was, you know, some like uh, some one reason to work with us over everyone else out there. That would be great. But you know, we 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 provide really great customer service. That's always been a been a big kind of key factor of of our business and and being able to maintain and be successful there is uh, we're all pretty personable and people like to work with us. I think so. You know, we, we like to leave people with a smile on their face and and uh, yeah, we do we do we do good quality work. I, I mean, without tooting my own horn. No, I, I agree because we've had some like even other eight bigger agencies that you know sub stuff out to us like development stuff, and more often than not, they love working with us because they've worked with so many different freelancers, and we're kind of like three freelancers in a way, like a freelance agency, but we treat it like an agency. We're always there. We you know we don't disappear. We follow through. You know we work hard. We deliver, um, and that has separated us. Um, you know just you know staple real easy thing. Provide great work and great uh, customer service and. The rest will take care of itself. I like um, your, your your website. The big headline is "Quality Websites, Happy Clients." It's what we love to do. Yeah, yeah. And I love the fact that you're not really talking about the technology. You do mention down below some of your services. By the way, what's a smug mug? <laughs> That's another platform <laughs> That's that we we build on. Um, not as much these days. Um, that that kind of market's shifted a little bit, but yeah, it's a gotcha. platform for photographers. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, okay. yeah, and I mean. We, we've done a lot of WordPress for photographers too, but in terms of like a heavy duty photo management and photo hosting, like their back end, uh, you know, servers and uh, the tools to just manage galleries or like, you know, bar none in the industry. Um, so that's, you know, that's why they're popular with photographers. What do you spend? So, so you kind of <laughs> all on the tools, you're all kind of developing and, and, and handling clients. I'm kind of curious how you manage the schedule, like how do you know when you've got a full dance card and you just can't take any more clients on? Do you have like an agency-wide production schedule or production slate? 
No, we 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 don't. Um, I guess we kind of play it by ear. Uh, oh, it, again, it's oh, you lost the poster. <laughs> there goes the poster. <laughs> That's right. We haven't broken the internet, but we broke no, the but poster. my poster fell down in protest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that, I guess that's the nice thing about having you know all of us being able to jump in and, and do a little bit of everything is that you know if, if one of our plates is particularly full or if you know some kind of emergency comes up that we need to focus our time on, there's someone else in to to jump in and help. Um, since we've been kind of doing Beaver Builder and Beaver Builder has been growing, it's it's been getting harder and harder because our time's getting you know split between more and more mm. more and more things. But we're still still managing uh, managing to get it all done to some to some degree like the to-do list keeps on growing but <laughs> we're yeah. still knocking it out I'll bet <laughs> hey Billy from an operations point of view what's the one thing that keeps you up at night about the business Ooh, on the beaver builder side or uh, the agency side well yeah either <laughs> either yeah um not a whole lot maybe too much coffee during the day <laughs> 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 no uh I mean, we're always trying to think of ways to kind of enhance uh, Beaver Builder, obviously, because it's it's new and it's it's kind of our baby. Um, we're all really excited about it too. It's one of those things that we just love doing. But uh, agency, you know, it's not it's not too bad. It hums along nicely, so not too much to worry about there. Cool. We're going to talk more about Beaver Builder, um, but before we get there, what do you guys do when you're not working? How do you how do you chill out and kind of keep your head together? Sure. Well, we, um, we, we, Billy got me, I think Billy's probably the spearhead of this, he's a, he's a pretty avid mountain biker, uh -huh. and uh, he kind of lets Justin and I tag along with him, uh, and <laughs> so we do a lot of mountain biking. We've got a, uh, got a nice little establishment down the, down the street from our office that serves pretty good food and, uh, and tasty beverages, so we'll go and have a cold beer after work sometimes, and, and that's a nice way to relax after the end of the day. And you're, um, you're a musician, Robbie, I see some guitars there in the background. Yeah, yeah, I play a little guitar. Play a little guitar. Cool. Yeah. Billy has twins, um, so that keeps him pretty busy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Very busy. Boys, or, boys or girls? Identical boys. Oh wow, cool. Yeah. How how old? They're uh, almost two and a half. Wow, man, that's, that's gonna that's gonna be a handful right now, huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's fun though. Search and destroy, hey. <laughs> um, uh. So kind of a dovetail question to the what keeps you awake at night, but if you could fix one thing in the business right now either client services or Beaver Builder, what would it be? Sure. We, we're, we're just going to get rid of this poster. Hang on. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's doing that. Oh, there's we a guitar. I'll deal with that later. Oh, hey, yeah. You do a little music as well, Troy? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Nice. Nice. We'll have to do like... See about it. The technology is not quite there yet, but uh, someday we should do like a virtual jam. You I know, know it's, it's funny. You, it's funny you mention that because there are so many people in the WordPress space who play an instrument, and I've quite often had this idea of like hooking a whole bunch of us up somehow remotely on Skype and all plugged in to the one interface and actually just doing a live WordPress jam. You know, oh, that would be, that'd be uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. I know some artists that do that now, but they don't do it live. You know, like one person will lay down their part of the track and yeah. send it to the next guy and. You see a lot of like SoundCloud artists doing that. It's cool. Yeah, it's yeah. coming. It's coming. We've got to just yeah. like figure out that latency issue. Yeah, we need, dec we need decent internet in Australia too. Our, our bandwidth here is just too slow at the moment, so there's no way we could handle it. Oh, yeah. well, okay. we, should, we, should all guess... we should all move to South Korea. They've got the fastest internet in the world. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm game. Yeah. I mean, if you do it, I will too. <laughs> it might be a little harder for these guys with the families, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we well, were talking about wait, like wait, the wait. what, what uh, if we could wave a magic wand and fix something, and we honestly were kind of struggling with it. But I had this idea yeah. earlier today, and I think it would be that like health insurance and the like kind of the volatility of having your own business. You know, like we're we're lucky right now; things are going pretty smooth. But there's always that kind of worry in the back of your mind, like, hey, like I don't know if this is going to last, and you know, are we doing things right? And if we could wave a magic wand and just know that you know for the next five years, like we're going to stay in business and mm. and uh, be able to keep food on our plate, that would be that would be like the dream come true. But on yeah. the other hand, we're very you know very fortunate to be doing what we're doing, and you know having your own business has its plenty of perks along with those kind of few downsides of, of the, the extra stress and worry, I guess. The what stuff are, to keep the stuff that keeps you up at night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are some of the perks? Because I'm a huge fan of having your own business and doing your own thing, walking to the beat of your own drum, so to speak. What, from your point of view, what are some of the perks of having your own business? Making your own schedules, bar none, number one for me. I mean, 
I was talking to someone last night about it. I can't remember the exact conversation, but I was like, yeah, it's been like six years since I've had to be to work on time. Um, (laughs) You know, like, you know, I mean, I I still have to get stuff done. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a difference between, you know, making your own schedule and and, and responsibilities and whatnot. I mean, at the end of the day, the work needs to be done. But, you know, I had, we have one buddy who his uh, last employer, you know, if he was five minutes later, left five minutes early, you know, he'd get a ration for it. You know, I was like, why? I mean, that's so ridiculous. I mean, five minutes, you know, he's a great worker. It's not like he's slacking off. So yeah, that's mine for me. Definitely. Billy. <clears throat> yeah. The schedule is a big one for me, especially with the kids. And, uh, I would have to say the office is kind of neat too. having our own little spot yeah, to yeah. kind of get away is kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a pretty neat office in this little suburb, you know, and it's, it's great. I mean, the, the weather's fantastic here all the time, and yeah, yeah. it's it's just nice to have a spot of your own, kind of. Yeah, office slash man cave, right? Exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. For the wife. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, let's talk a little bit about Beaver Builder. Now, I was actually connected to you guys through Kim Doyle, who is, mm-hmm. uh, for those that don't know, the WP chick. Big shout out to you, Kim Doyle. Thank you very much for connecting hey, Kim. me with uh, with these guys. She was raving, and I knew of Beaver Builder. I'd seen it come across Twitter and come across my desk a bunch of times. I hadn't got a chance to try it out. Um, I've used, you know, just about every page builder there is around. How did, first of all, how did Beaver Builder come about? Originally, it wasn't called Beaver Builder, right? So tell us, tell us why you started making a WordPress page builder in the first place. Like, you know, the obvious question is, why weren't you just using Visual Composer like everyone else? Sure, sure. Um, we, it's funny, we see this all the time with, uh, with developers. You know, there, there really is kind of a stigma uh, with using page builders, and we were kind of guilty of that ourselves. And we had a couple of clients, this was a little over a year ago, um, that came to us that wanted a website that they could edit. And one of them actually wanted us to use, Vis- it was Visual Composer, I believe, right? Uh, it's a few different things. One, one of them was the, uh, one of the staple ones that I remember was one of the popular Theme Force themes that had its own mm. kind of page builder built into the theme. Uh-huh. Not Visual oh, Composer, nice. but I think Visual Composer was probably one of them. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah, we had two clients, separate clients completely coincidentally that they came in around the same time, but they both wanted websites that they could edit yeah. um, afterwards. You know, they wanted us to build it, and then they wanted to be able to take it and make it you know, theirs and not have to come back to us for changes. And so we did one, it was either, yeah, like the theme for us. We used, I forget exactly which page builder it was, but we used an existing page builder. And then the other one we did with advanced custom fields, I think, mm. and doing a lot of like custom page templates with, mm. you know, the data and advanced custom fields. And the, it kind of opened our eyes to the benefits of using a tool like that is that like we actually did deliver the site and they were able to edit the, themselves and it was huge because you know in the agency side of our work a lot of the time we spend is you know emailing back and forth with past clients about kind of small changes and edits and uh, we were you know we were like okay we should start doing this for other clients like this is really great we went on a really exhaustive search of all the kind of page builder plugins out there and themes too and we didn't find one that you know they're all they're, there's some really great options out there but we didn't find one that fit all of our needs and so we kind of decided to start building around it was it was Justin really that spearheaded the development of it you know he started hacking away on this thing in his evening time and he'd kind of come in in the morning and say oh guys check this out like <laughs> I got you know look what I did look what I did. and it started off as a back end page builder but then you know we realized we really wanted it to like be on the front end and so it was this big like can we do that and you know stayed up all night one night and came in the next morning like all excited like a kid you know like hey check it out it's on the front end now like I didn't even have to do all that much like the code's all the same and, uh, so it's cool, and so it was definitely one of those kind of scratch your own itch um, cases where this is like something we wanted for our business, and we uh, yeah we built it and then figured it might be useful to other people and tried to tried to sell it and make a little business out of it. So originally it was called the Fastline Media Page Builder, right? That's how it was originally launched. Um, there's, there's a couple of cu- couple of interesting questions here. How did like? You know the whole lean startup methodology, which is, you know, don't build anything until you can prove that there are a whole bunch of people willing to buy your thing, right? How did you know that this was an idea worth pursuing? And how did you know that, um, that you know, <coughs> you were going to put these resources into it? Like, h- how did you, how were you just confident that p- other people would want it and buy it? 
Well, I felt like there was a lot of room for improvement in the space. Um, like Robbie said, you know, we tried out a lot of the existing solutions and none of them really worked for us. Um, partly, you know, not to knock down some of our competitors, but partly because I feel like some of them are just like too over, overly complicated. Um, so when it comes time for our clients to actually go in there and make some edits, um, you know, that part's hard. Or some of them maybe aren't powerful enough for developers. So we needed that kind of blend um, of, you know, simplicity for our customers yet powerful for us to extend and, you know, and to do things without maybe even having to write code too that a developer would want to do. Um, so, I, I mean, we were definitely overconfident. We definitely, <clears throat> you know, just jumped in um, without, you know, actually being like, you know, reassured by any kind of research or anything. That's for sure. But I think we're really confident uh, in the fact of, you know, that we could do this. Like we could make something that we felt was better. Um, and it's, it, you know, we're definitely seeing results, you know, I mean, it, we're, that stigma Robbie is talking about, you know, like I, what we weren't sure who our customer was going to be and our, a, a huge, like, you know, part of our customer, uh, type of customer that we get is developers because they love it for that reason. And, you know, and I think we, we were able to do that because we, like Robbie said, we were building it for ourselves and, you know, we, we are our, our customer basically, um, you know, on that level. Um, but yeah, we didn't know if it was going to work. Uh, we had our fingers crossed. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <all right. laughs> So the, so the key, before we, before we get to the rebrand and the, and the name change, I just want to make this clear distinction because this took me a while to, to, for me to realize when I eventually got my hands on Beaver Builder and played with it, uh, what I realized is the big distinction is that it doesn't dump a crap load of short codes into the content editor. So if you switch themes, your content is preserved, whereas if you're using you know, a, a theme with a built-in page builder or one of the other popular page builder plugins, when you switch themes or you, you know, disable the plugin, you just end up with a bunch of short codes that are pretty much useless and you have to go and recreate all of your content, right? It, apart from that, it, 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 like, is that the main point of difference between Beaver Builder and the other solutions on the market? Uh, I mean, I think the UI is a lot cleaner um, in some regards. Uh, it's, we've purposely left certain things out like, uh, so, you know, net, one of the big ones that's, uh, you know, our biggest feature request too, unfortunately, but that we're still just, we don't feel like we've, we know what the user experience is to do it right is columns and columns. Mm. Um, so you can nest multiple columns inside columns and build these really complex layouts. And we're like, you know, it'd be great if it could do that. But at the same time, you know, just looking at the, from a user, you know, experience perspective, it's just, you know, the interface of that's a nightmare. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean, I, I think, I mean, that's my opinion on what differentiates us um, is, you know, kind of ease of use. Um, mm -hmm. And also, uh, you know, the extend, extendability for develop, developers, that'd be kind of hard to argue because a lot of the page builders are extendable for developers. Um, but we have great uh, developer support as well. You're right about that user experience. I'm going to be very controversial here. Uh, one of the, the the user experience, even with advanced custom fields, of which I'm a huge fan, by the way, and oh, I know, know Elliot quite totally. well and interviewed him live on the podcast. In fact, he was the first in-person uh, interview we ever did on the podcast here in Melbourne where we sat side by side on a couch in front of a room full of WordPress developers at one of our workshops. So love Elliot and what he's doing there. But one of the things that annoys me about the kind of the flexible um, and repeating fields in advanced custom fields is that you end up you end up needing a 37-inch monitor just to navigate your way through the complex layouts because there's no obvious kind of, okay, minimise this section button, which is something that I think would be really, should be really easy to implement. Just minimise this section so I can now focus on the section that I'm building. And you end up like feeling like you're lost in the matrix sometimes. And it's not just ACF, it's some of the other page builders as well where I can't imagine giving that to a client, for example. Like they would just right. lose, them, lose themselves down that rabbit hole. Um, so that's an interesting distinction. Let's talk about the rebrand. What, like, at what point did you become Beaver Builder, and why Beaver Builder? <laughs> well, we um, we were we were lucky. I think that one of our first customers was was kind of your typical. We, we always say the marketing guy. Like he's he's a marketing guy, and he was nice enough to to give us some some advice, some free advice for a long time. He, you know, and one of his kind of big pieces of advice is like, you guys have this, you know, really cool product. I love your product, but your marketing sucks. And he was like, you know, yeah. very blunt about it. And um, yeah, so we were emailing with him a lot. He was giving us a lot of feature suggestions and kind of being involved with the, the development and, and just you know, keeping uh, keeping a tab on what we were doing and giving us his, his uh, what is that, you know, his, his 
un, uh, unfiltered suggestions. <laughs> but that was one of the big ones was the name. He said, you guys, like, the name doesn't make sense. Like the Fastline page builder. It made sense to us because we were Fastline media. Sure. But yeah, it didn't make sense to him. And he, he didn't think it was memorable or stuck well. So we went through, we, we decided, okay, well, like, we'll take your advice. We're going to change our name. And it was this like mini, like multi-week process where we have, uh, you can't see it, but there's, you know, there, we have a window wall in our office and that's our whiteboard as well. We get like the dry erase markers. And mm -hmm. so we were like writing down all these names on our window and like not arguing, but just having some like heated debates and brainstorming sessions. Like we really wanted to nail, it's so hard to name something these days and especially <laughs> when you're trying to get the dot com, you know, yeah. like we're doing that whole thing where like we have this name that we love and then we go to like, you know, instant domain search or whatever and type it in. We're like, oh my God, it's taken. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, like you can't do it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we, I, I was thinking about like animals that build stuff and we were thinking like, and a beaver builder like it alliterated well. I kind of said I said it as a joke at first. I was like, "What do you guys think about this?" And we were like, we all kind of laughed. We're like, "Oh yeah, right. Like not gonna happen." Um, but then it just stuck in our heads. Like we were laughing about it all day, and we kind of kept saying like beaver builder, beaver builder. And, like, <laughs> it took it probably took a good week of us like you know not being able to forget it and joking like to actually convince ourselves like, hey, maybe like this, even though it's like super playful and kind of silly. Maybe we could pull it off, you know, like WordPress is, uh, it's, the community is, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's fun, you know, it's, it's, it, we don't take ourselves too seriously, obviously. And I, I think, it, yeah, we, we decided to give it a go. How did you find, how did you, so, so you've got this new brand, Beaver Builder, you put up a website, you've got a demo video, uh, you've, you know, plugged it in with whatever solution you're using to actually deliver the software and the licenses. I'm assuming you're using easy digital downloads and the software licensing stuff. Uh, we're we're actually we're we're on WooCommerce. Ah, uh -huh, cool. Yeah. We, we, um, how do you then go and find your first customers? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Commenting well, on blogs. <laughs> yeah, great. <right. laughs> good old fashioned our, good old fashioned forum marketing, hey? Yeah. 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 No, we, we. Well, that's been it's been one of the really cool parts about making this transition from doing the agency to doing the product sales is that we've been kind of putting ourselves out there and, and joining the, you know, like we've been using WordPress for years, um, but we've never really tuned into the community and kind of kept our finger on the pulse of what's going on in WordPress. And I'd say that's been kind of the biggest, uh, just putting ourselves out there, you know, finding ways to contribute to the conversation. Um, at first, yeah, we did a lot of like commenting on blogs and reaching out to, to writers in the WordPress space and saying, hey, we have this thing, like, you know, if you want, here's a review copy. If you want to write about us, we'd love to like help you out with that. Let us know. And it's been a learning process too. Like, you know, we, we, when we launched it, we kind of thought like, oh, we were so like proud of our little baby that we spent all this time building. We kind of thought like the walls were going to come down with people, you know, itching to like buy this product from us. And and uh, in reality, it, it wasn't so much, uh, it was like, it wasn't crickets, but it, yeah, the walls stayed up. Uh, so we've, we've been learning as we go. We've been learning as we go and exploring new avenues. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely been a learning process. Well, Robbie didn't tell you too, but he's becoming our like de facto like marketing expert. I mean, none of us knew a thing about like marketing because we, we never really had to as the agency. You know, we've. Our, we're a referral-based business on the agency side. Do great work, and you know, this word goes around. And we've had client, same clients for years, and you know, on some levels. But you know, marketing a product, we were all clueless. Um, and so we've all learned a lot. But Robbie's really like the one that's like just dove into that, and um, you know, just getting down to the science or, or the art, uh, you know, of it. Really, it's not a science. It'd be nice if it was a science. It'd be mm, so much yeah, easier. Yeah. <laughs> 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 where, and where, so where do you learn, Robbie? How do you learn about about digital marketing? What 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 are, what are some of the resources that you're using to to improve your skills in that area? Sure, um, I've been reading a lot and and uh, asking a lot of questions and and reaching out to people. Um, we uh, I, I don't know how how the like how that kind of transition started, but one of the you know one of the things our our, our original marketing guy was telling us was that the, you know the copy on our website could like you know stand to be improved. So I started doing a lot of reading on copywriting and and uh, looking at blogs. I should pull up my like, reading list so I can give some plugs. But they, like there's some there's great Reese's or you know like the internet's amazing for learning stuff. And it was kind of this yeah you know, like there's School there's of Google. Like, yeah yeah totally. 
there's diminishing returns too. Like if you're trying to learn something on the internet, you know, you start off like there's just this huge wealth of information and then the more and more you learn, the harder and harder it is to kind of find more new, you know, content really. Mm. So I'm in this point right now where there's just like endless, you know, endless content available and it's, it's easy cause it's all, it's all new, but, but yeah, I'm sure eventually we'll get to that point where we're just like looking around for the next thing and, yeah, God love the hyperlink, hey? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm, so I'm curious. Like, once you found, because I'm, I'm, I'm checking out your website, right? And you've got everything's, every, you've got everything in the right place on the website. You've got, you know, uh, this great video up the top with a bit, of, like, very brief description about what it is, and then a great call to action, and then you've got a testimonial from Chris Lemmer. How did that come about? How, how did that come about, by the way? How, how did the relationship with Chris Lemmer come about? Because he's like, he's a fairly big hitter and big influencer in the WordPress space, blogs every day. If you don't, if anyone listening to this podcast doesn't know who Chris Lemmer is, then obviously you've just kind of fallen out of the clouds in the last half an hour. Um, go and check out chrislemmer.com. Um, how did that uh, relationship come about with Chris? Yeah, we, um, we got really lucky in all honesty. I mean, well, lucky, yeah, we got lucky. Um, he wrote an article about the, he did like a, you know, the competition amongst page builders like what's mm. the best page builder out there and he reviewed uh I, I don't know exactly how many maybe like less than 10 though mm. and we were one of the, his like clear favorites and, and uh it was funny we we were following his blog you know we got tuned into him early on and, and we're reading his blog pretty often he was one of the people we reached out to originally to see if he'd write about us you know we sent him an email and and uh, he ne we never heard back from a, on that email, and so we always were kind of like, oh, man, like if only Chris Lemma would like write about us, man, that's going to like make it, you know, like we'll be on the map then. And then I think, it, I, think I remember Billy, like we, we used Slack, and Billy like put something in Slack or text us on a group text, and he's like, guess who just bought Beaver Builder? Sunday Chris morning. Chris Lemma. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we saw his name come through on our orders, and we were just like, oh, like, oh, my God, like something's happening. It's <laughs> Chris Lemma bought our... Uh, Bought our product, and then yeah, he was nice enough to you know write this amazing article about us, and we uh, I reached out to him again about the testimonial, and I say, hey, you know, I know you're a really busy guy, and so like we'd love to use this quote on our homepage if you could just let us know if that's like not cool, and uh, we'll go ahead and take it down. But if I don't hear from you, like I'm gonna assume like that's okay. So. I always call like he's my buddy. I call him my buddy, even though I've never met him and never actually made contact with him because he really did like throw us a bone there. But yeah, if Chris, if you happen yeah. to hear this, thank you. And if you want us to take the testimonial down, we will. I hope you don't. <laughs> Let us know. I'm sure he'll yeah. be fine. Chris is Chris is a regular contributor to our blog, so I'm going to make sure I send a copy of this interview to Chris. And nice. uh, let him know that at the 34-minute mark of the interview, we give him a big shout-out. So uh, I'm cool. sure he'll be fine with that. And then you've got all these great testimonials from um, early adopters, people who are using it, like Kim Doyle and Bill Manos and Jonathan Perez and Mike yeah. McKeeran. How did you go about soliciting those testimonials? Did you have, like, a process in place to get that feedback from early users? Um the the testimonials all came from different sources they were all organic um, some of them came through Twitter some of them came through our email some of them came through the support forums and I started a Google document pretty early on like anytime someone said something nice about Beaver Builder I'd throw it in this Google document with a little link back or you know some reference of where I could find it again and and uh, yeah I went back and combed through all those and, and found you know the ones that I, that I thought really like portrayed the message that we were trying to put out there and, and reached out to everyone and asked them if we could we could use their testimonial and and everyone was was really nice about it and, and agreed it was cool again we got we got a little lucky to have such like influential people there saying such nice things about us i feel very grateful well it must be indicative of the fact that it's a good product and i'm not just saying that because you're on the podcast um how do you know what to measure in terms of like you making this transition from client services into a product company measuring stuff like measuring conversions and measuring signups in a product business is completely different to client services. So how do you know what to look at in any given week or month in terms of what's the number that you look at to say, okay, this is moving in the right direction or hang on a second, we need to do some work here. That's honestly, that's something that we like, I'd love to get better at. Um, like one of the blogs I've been following is uh, kiss metrics is like, as far oh, as yeah. like in the marketing world and yeah. those guys, you know, are just, brilliant geniuses with that kind of like, you know, metrics tracking and, and analytics and, you know, knowing exactly what, what, you know, everything you're doing, like how, like watching what those actions, like how people react to them and the results from that. Um, 
for us on, I mean, in all honesty, it's, it's our, uh, you know, we watch like the, the, the orders that we get every day and we watch our traffic numbers and we've been doing more and more kind of, uh, more and more analytics and, and tracking metrics, but it's something that we could definitely improve upon. So, uh, but for now, yeah, mostly traffic numbers and orders. Cool. We have been getting a little better recently about being able to see precisely uh, conversion rates from different sources, um, mm, which yeah. is nice. So we can know if, like, you know, one source is working better than another. Um, we weren't particularly good about that. So that's been a recent improvement that's been nice to see that data. And you're just using Google Analytics to track that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we are. Navigating your, way, navigating your way through the horrible interface that is Google Analytics <laughs> to find the data that you need? <laughs> Well, I guess yes. I need to find a better one. I, I you know, I'm really for me, Google Analytics has been it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's something we should be trying, uh, I'm all ears. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you know, I have a love hate relationship with Google Analytics because it has so much data, but it's just so poorly presented. I think that uh, you know, and hey, sorry, Justin Catroni, who I know has been on the podcast, and we're good buddies, and he's analytics advocate at Google. If he does hear this, he's probably oh, going to cool. shout me down and ban me from Google. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I just, I'm just i just telling it how it is, man. The Google Analytics interface just makes it so damn hard to find the information you need, in my opinion, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so tell me, uh, it, what, what is the plan? Is the plan, and let's just pretend that none of your clients are listening to this, is the plan to migrate away from client services completely and just become a product company? Everyone's we're, kind of nodding. <laughs> well, yeah, it's something that we're still we're still honestly like deciding and, and figuring out as we go. Um, we certainly, you know, yeah, we don't want to abandon our existing clients, and there's also kind of an element of like putting all of our eggs in one basket. Sure, um, yeah. we've definitely been been cutting back on the amount of client work we've been taking in. Um, I think maybe it, it would be like a. I'd say maybe it's it's almost like a dream, like that that would be the case that we could just be like say, hey, sorry, like you know, as much as we love client work, like you know, we got this is it, like we're doing uh, we're doing software sales now, but in the you know any time in the near distant future, I don't think that's going to be a reality. Um, we want to be there for our clients that, you know, that we've had in the past, and we want to kind of keep that that business uh, viable. Do you get nervous about building a product on someone else's technology? Like I, I have this moment all the time where I'd wake up and think, you know, what if I wake up one morning and WordPress has integrated video user manuals and a business coaching program into their dashboard, then all of a sudden I'm out of business. Um, um, but do you get nervous about putting all of your eggs in the WordPress basket thinking that, well, hey, you know, like 10 years ago, WordPress was where? Like nothing. And now Squarespace is advertising on the Super Bowl. At what point does WordPress become no longer this thing that we can build our businesses and support our families on? I, I'm for me personally, I'm I'm not too worried about it just because where I think WordPress is going, at least with our product. I mean, I'd find it hard to believe that they'd put something that has that much functionality, you know, is what is that we're offering inside of WordPress. You know, and we're, I'd be more worried if I like, you know, was like made a Barley style editor, and you know, they got the front end editor coming. I mean, I could be wrong, um, but you know, we've seen that happen before too. We've built other things on other stacks and and then had that become obsolete and really i think when we've had that happen before we just learned our lesson to not robbie said not pull our eggs in one basket because mm -hmm. you know you, you can never be sure especially in today's internet mm -hmm. it's really hard you know to be sure you know you've got to kind of keep moving and kind of keep looking to the future as far as you can mm. cool um so we should do the elevation round, uh, which is our lightning round. For those that don't know, WP Elevation is a business coaching program to help you as a WordPress-based business grow your business into a successful thing. Uh, so this is the elevation round. I'm going to ask these guys a series of quick questions, and maybe I'll just mix this up a bit and uh, you know ask each of you a different question. Um, sure. Billy, what is the number one thing any freelancer or consultant needs to know? They need to be very organized. Oh. And have the right tools in their tool belt. Be very organized and have the right tools in their tool belt. I like it. Um, like, a, like a good craftsman. Uh, Justin, what's the best thing you've ever done to find new customers? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, what, do, what, do we, what do we say about this? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you do good work. Posting, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> doing, doing good work. Um, you know, the, the whole good support thing. I mean... I can't tell you how many referrals we've had over the year. Fastlane Media is 
never really done any serious marketing, but you know, yeah, we've gotten, I mean, I just got a referral, like two referrals today from this lady who's like, we've known for like four years and, and I can't tell you how many referrals and some of them are our biggest clients that we've gotten from her. So yeah, I've done great work and that's how I've gotten, you know, new customers. Awesome. Uh, (laughs) Robbie, how do you stop competing on price? Because, and, and this from a, from the product point of view as well, I mean, this is not the cheapest solution on the market, right? Sure, sure. Uh, I think making sure that your pricing provides value to your customers and then is also sustainable. Um, instead of trying to undercut or compete, I mean, that, that is a viable business model in some areas, but, but making sure that there is genuine value with your pricing and then you don't have to compete. Nice. Any tips on writing better proposals? I'll leave that open to anyone on the panel. I would say making them detailed and making sure that they kind of contain, you know, you, you kind of have to think of it from the customer perspective, kind of address everything that they would want to be, no, you know, be notified of in a proposal. So detail. Cool. Uh, do you guys have a favorite tool or system for customer relationship management? Sure. Yeah, we, we recently started using Harvest. Uh-oh. And I know it's, it's not like a traditional CRM. We had been using Sugar previously. Oh, yeah. And then we kind of split it up between Sugar and Toggle and a couple other tools. But we switched over to Harvest, and we've been kind of hacking it to, to be all our like go-to solution for time tracking and customer management and project management as well to some degree. So you might have just answered the next question. What's the best way to keep a project and a client on track? Mm. Uh, sometimes you just can't. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, let me let me defeat. reframe that question what's the best way to avoid scope creep because that's really the question that everyone uh, has yeah that's yeah that's good i mean bringing up <laughs> budget really to a client like you know telling them like hey like offering them solutions really because they may come to you with the biggest idea and they want the world and you're like well do you really need the world maybe you can use this instead can mm. you afford the world afford you know it. if they say i want the world and i can afford the world we're like great you know write us a check yeah um, <laughs> But yeah. a lot of times they'll take a step back and they'll be like, okay, you're right. Like, let's go with the easier solution for now and then build on that um, type of thing. So, you know, just that conversation and give them options and things like that, definitely. What is it about the web design space? Because, like, if you take your car to a mechanic, right, and you leave your car there all day, usually what happens is they call you in the middle of the day and they tell you that there's some unforeseen thing that has happened now that they've opened the bonnet and that they're going to hit you up for an extra 300 bucks, which you need because otherwise you're going to be putting your entire family safety at risk by driving an unsafe car. Of course, you're not going to argue with them, right? But what is it about web designers when they say, oh, can you just add this feature to my website? And of course, I'm not going to pay you any extra for it. What the hell is that about? How did we as an industry put ourselves in that position? I guess maybe we've allowed it to happen, um, you know, over the years and that, you know, it's our responsibility to, you know, as, you know, freelancers and, you know, agencies and whatnot to just put our foot down and say, sorry, but we, we, we charge for our time, you know, you know, every minute of our time. I, I know a guy who charges for text messages, you know, I, I, luckily I don't have too many clients texting me, but the ones I do, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> yeah. let me figure out what's the per text rate. <laughs> yeah. You should be able to track your text messages and have it integrate with Stripe and automatically send them an invoice, right? Uh-huh. Here's an idea. I'm going to put yeah. a link in the. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to Mike Montero's uh, presentation on Vimeo. I don't know if you guys have seen it from the Creative Mornings. I think maybe in San Francisco or Chicago. I can't remember where. Um, has this, and I'm going to swear. Has this great presentation called "Fuck You, Pay Me." Uh, which yeah. is just gold. So I'm going to make sure that there's a link uh, to that in the show notes because I think every web designer should watch that um, that uh, that presentation. Um, I think you may I've, have already I've seen that one. That one. That was that. Was, yeah, such a. I love the lawyer too. Like yes. that video. He's, it's so funny though. His lawyer. His lawyer's fan, I know they're like a comedy act, aren't they? It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Um, you may have already answered this, Justin. Uh, any ideas for getting referrals from existing customers? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that kind of goes again along the same lines and just, well, actually knock them off their socks, you know, I mean, because yeah. if, if someone comes to them and says, oh, hey, you know, like I'm, I'm looking for like, to get a new website, they're like, oh, I use this guy or, oh, man, you got to go to this guy. He's the best. He does great work. You know, they'll, they'll sell you. You don't have to sell yourself, you know, like they'll come to you like ready to go. They haven't talked to anyone else. Awesome. And uh, final <laughs> question in the elevation round. What's the number one thing you can do to differentiate yourself from everyone else out there? Treat your clients like gold. Yeah, and you know what? This is so true too because 
and that might like people listening to this might go oh you duh but seriously how many times have you heard a client tell you about a horror experience they've had with a previous web designer who's just you know gone you know heck gone trekking in tibet in the middle of a project and just left them holding the baby web developers and web designers go missing all the bloody time there must be some <laughs> like you know the bermuda triangle where they just disappear <laughs> into oblivion right <laughs> so you're right if you treat your clients like gold and do good work you are going to get more work because most web developers and designers traditionally are a little bit flaky i'm sorry to say yeah it's really that easy i mean it's you know i mean there's a lot more to it but i mean you know if if you at least want to you know, have some kind of, you know, comfort in knowing that, hey, this could work, you know, just, yeah, do good work and treat your clients great and you're halfway there. Yeah. Awesome. Um, thanks for getting us through the elevation round. Now, we should announce the competition um, uh, before we wrap up here. The competition is, these guys are very, very, very kindly sponsoring two pr uh, prizes this week which is a pro membership of uh, Beaver Builder, which is valued at $199 each. So you could win one of these. And in order to enter the competition, you need to leave us a comment underneath this video. So you're going to need to go to wpelevation.com slash Beaver Builder. That is going to be the link for this particular episode. I just made that up. And uh, <laughs> um, somebody, uh, sorry, uh, leave us a comment and tell us the number one thing, if you could wave a magic wand and fix one thing about WordPress, what would it be? All right, if you could wave a magic wand and fix one thing about WordPress, what would be the number one thing you would want to fix about WordPress? And I'll get Robbie to swing by in a couple of weeks and go through the comments and award those prizes. Sound good, guys? Perfect. Sounds excellent. cool. Great. So tell me, what's the, what's the roadmap for the next 12 months for Beaver Builder? What can we expect to see? We have our product roadmap, um, which is you know, you know, feature-driven, um, actually, right now, I'm, I'm really excited about, uh, you know, the first part of, you know, the, the, the rest of the year's roadmap, which is uh, I'm personally going to stop developing for a couple weeks and really just bury my head in documentation, um, but also reach out to some customers um, and just start calling them and, uh, you know, at figuring out what their needs are um, and, and, you know, what, you know, we could be doing better, what could be better about WordPress, what could be better about their business, you know, just... A lot of learning um, and those kind of things, um, and then you know, once I get out of that phase, uh, we're going to jump back into um, some development, some module development, and look at and, and template page development, and look at building stuff geared towards uh, uh, conversion optimization. Because right now, um, our you know our lineup of of stuff that we give you to build a page is um, mainly geared towards like small business, real world situation website like that. Not as much as geared towards landing pages, and we feel that. Well, it's also pretty damn good at building landing pages, so maybe we should spend some time on uh, that tool set. Uh, you know, that part of the tool set. Um, I'm gonna spend, you know, give our, our the template piece has been the biggest piece, and we've seen that too because people have talked about it. You know, even Chris Lemma said one of his the things he said was that that was like you know he was able to instantly you know like have a template up and running and customize and get the page he wanted quickly. And we've heard that from a lot of people. We've seen competitors. Um, either they're looking at us or they just figure it out on their own, you know, focus on the template piece. And I think that's one of the biggest, you know, get people building quickly. No one wants to start from a blank slate. Um, so we're going to spend some time on that whole, the user experience piece of that. Um, and really, uh, there, there's a lot to talk about there, so I won't go into detail. But, um, and then, um, you know, the other thing too, um, you know, part of the roadmap is us, you know, figuring out more than just the 12, next 12 months. Um, figuring out, you know, the next couple of years where we're going is like, you know, is a product business, you know, in terms of Beaver Builder or some, you know, um, something else that we, you know, can augment what we're doing there. Um, we don't know what that is yet, but we're learning. You know, we want to talk to customers. We, you know, we're brainstorming um, and just, you know, trying to figure that piece out. So that's that's kind of where we're at. The, you know, more or less the next twelve months and trying to learn about the future and figure out whatever that may be. <laughs> uh, two two quick questions um, that you may or may not be able to answer. Uh, uh, any? Can we expect to see any kind of movement into a Beaver Builder as a SaaS at any point in the? Uh, I know it's a huge undertaking, but is that kind of in the back of your mind somewhere? No, we've we already made that decision. I mean, unless we decide, well, we change our minds. Um, we've been we we talked about it early on, and we're like, should we do this? Should we not do this? And we decided no. We want to focus on you know the software and. Uh, we feel like there's too much competition in that space sure. um, as it is now. I mean, you know, once you start doing that, you know, like, hey, come here and build your website. Mm. What makes you unique against, you know, Squarespace and Wix and all those kind of things, you know, yeah. versus like we're selling tools to developers that are building websites for other people. 
yep. you know? Um, and that's, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. And there's a hell of a lot less competition in, in that space. Yeah. Cool. And this other question um, might, I might out myself here as um, uh, not the world's best uh, developer. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Um, <laughs> but you know how with these page builders, right, you can do things like you can set up a blog gallery and a blog grid and that just hooks into the posts of WordPress. What, like, is, is, are we going to see the, the ability for this to happen with custom post types? So, for example, when I set up a testimonials page at the moment, I'm kind of manually putting in the testimonial data, right? Right. If I want to store the testimonial data in a custom post type so that when I update the testimonial custom post type, the template that I've built with that post type automatically is updated. Is that something that we're going to see or is it something that already exists? Pardon my ignorance if I've missed something. No, it doesn't exist, and it, it has been something that's being requested more and more, and uh, it's on my in my kind of like research list that I have. That um, you know, I have all that thing. It's that list is huge, but uh, I bet. it's it's high it's high up there. Yeah, because I, I can't when, I can't find that in any in any page builder, right? I yeah. mean, I know that I know that um, I know that um, uh, conductor plugin from Matt and the guys at Slocum Studios. I know that that does something along those lines, but it's that that's more kind of a content. A layout builder it's not a page builder as such the way that I kind of see it um, and I can't find any of the page builders that are doing this hooking into custom post types right and you, when you said conductor I mean when I saw that and what you can do with the content of a custom post type that's exactly you know what I would want to I mean not exactly what I would want to do I mean I haven't really even put much thought into it other than just like you know some you know little research here and there but yeah I mean that's Exactly what you're talking about. I'd yeah. love to see something like that for sure because, I mean, there, that just opens up a world of possibilities. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad it's not just me. I'm glad I just didn't miss the memo. Um, <laughs> hey, um, do you think, you know, Noel Tock been talking recently about the future of WordPress in custom dashboards, you know, tapping into the, the REST API and building custom dashboards on WordPress, similar to what they have done at Happy Tables. I'm having lots of conversations about people uh, with people in WP Elevation and just in the ecosystem who are reaching out to me asking for advice about building uh, vertical-based solutions based on WordPress for, you know, like think of, you know, happy tables for other verticals. Do you think this is something that we're going to be seeing more and more of uh, over, the, over the next 12 months to two years in the WordPress space? Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's going to go away. And I, lo I love that we're seeing it too because, you know, before people started doing that, I always thought like, you know, like WordPress can do all, I mean, it has all these pieces in there already um, that, yeah, you, it's, you know, I mean, I, I know there's some people, developers that would cringe out there if I called it an application framework, but it's, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's... Uh, Especially those cool kids in the Bay Area, man, hey? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, you totally can build. I mean, we've built so many custom solutions ourselves for clients with it. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's the it, possibilities are endless. And really, I mean, the platform doesn't matter as much. But um, Robbie, you had a... What, what was your... Uh, well, yeah. I mean, on, yeah, no, like on a high level, I think that it's like kind of a hot topic right now, the whole custom dashboard thing. But, but as far as the future of WordPress on a high level, I think simplifying it for users is going to be a biggie. Like I, I think I know Matt was. I think he said I don't know where it came from, but he's trying to get to fifty percent of the internet. You know, yeah, that's, that's the right. goal. And I think to get there, making the process simpler, whether that be in the installation or the dashboard, or you know, if you're using WordPress as uh, your band's website or your, for your business website or whatever that is, like if, if custom dashboards for niches or just a uh, revamp of the dashboard itself is going to get more people and maybe more people that are less tech savvy onto WordPress, I see that being, being the future because I think this thing is growing. Totally. I mean, and an interesting thing is that I don't know. I don't know what um, what Mr. Matt Mullenweg's hope is in terms of getting that fifty percent adoption. Whether it's um, uh, you know whether it's people downloading <clears throat> WordPress and installing it, but I actually think that the way to do that is to have lots of happy table restaurant engine kind of uh, platforms set up for different verticals. Like I give you an uh, an example. If you are a band, right? Um, you know, uh, setting up a website on something like Bandcamp or there's another one called uh, Reverb Nation, which is literally like click, point, drag, drop, super, super stupid, simple for a band to set up a website, right? Those dudes are not going to download WordPress and go through the famous five-minute install, uh, which is not five minutes unless you're a web developer. Um, you know, and they're probably going to be even... I mean, why open a hosting account with Bluehost and then install WordPress and then pick a theme where you can just start an account with... Bandcamp or Reverb Nation and have it all baked into the one solution. So I think if WordPress does get to 50% adoption, it's going to be 
websites powered by something else built on top of WordPress. And Matt Mullenweg, I'm open to a debate on this. I've been trying to get you on the podcast. So come <laughs> debate me on this issue. Um, anyway, so um, it's, really, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it, uh, how it pans out over the, next, uh, over the next 12 months or so. Um, hey, guys, thank you so much for spending so much time with us on the podcast. It's been almost an hour. It's been a, a, a pleasure getting to know the people behind Build a Beaver. I'm imagining that people can reach out to you guys at uh, wpbeaverbuilder.com. Is there a Twitter account people can get to? Yep, Beaver Builder. On yep, Twitter. at Beaver Builder on Twitter. And now, yeah, the pleasure's been all ours. This has been great. Thanks so much for having us. This was awesome. really fun. No problem at Super all. Um, final question is, who would you like me to try and interview on this podcast and why? Uh, it's funny. You just said it. We were talking about this earlier, how we were going to answer this one. Yeah, let's let's get Matt on there. I, I'd, love to see, uh, yes. I'd love to see you guys yeah. <laughs> break it down. Well, I, yep, not, not for lack of trying. Um, so no, that's, that's cool. I'm just going to email Matt every week for the rest of my life until he says yes. All right, Matt? There you go. You've, you been, go. you've been politely warned. Um, I have actually had Matt on the WP Think Tank uh, way back when, the, the first one, which kind of we published as an episode of the podcast. But I do want to have some one-on-one -on -one time with Matt. He was on the Matt Report recently, and I did send him yep. an email with a sad face and went, I can't believe you went on the Matt Report before you came on here. But anyway, um, so thank you for that prompt. I will reach out to him again and try and get Mr. Mullenweg on the WP Elevation podcast. Um, Groovy, hey, man, thanks again for all your time. Really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing how, uh, how you guys uh, roll over the next 12 months and keep in touch. Definitely. Awesome. Thanks, Troy. Absolutely. Thanks, Troy. Hey, I hope you enjoyed meeting the three guys from Beaver Builder as much as I did. That was fun and challenging having three guests on the one episode, but definitely worthwhile. Uh, and they suggested that I interview Matt Mullenweg. So, Matt Mullenweg, if you're watching or listening, I'd love to have you on the podcast. I have already emailed you and uh, given you an open invitation to make an appointment anytime you'd like to get on the podcast and have a chat to us. Uh, this episode is, of course, brought to you by Video User Manuals. I'm not going to tell you anything more about that. I'm just going to say go to videousermanuals.com and check out our mascots and our cool artwork and characters on the uh, website and have a look and learn all about it for yourself. It'll save you tons of time uh, having to teach clients how to use WordPress. Subscribe to the podcast at wpelevation.com slash subscribe, uh, or you can get on over to iTunes and subscribe there, and also leave us a rating and a review if you like. Tell us what you like about the show. Uh, that really helps us come up in the search results and reach more uh, of an audience and help other WordPress consultants, because that's what our job here at WP Elevation is, is to help you build a successful WordPress-based business. All the show notes for this particular episode and all the links and everything we spoke about will be at wpelevation.com slash beaverbuilder. That's all one word, it's spelt exactly how it sounds, nothing funny going on there. And remember to leave your comments underneath this video and tell us, or underneath this episode, and tell us the number one thing you would change about WordPress if you could wave a magic wand, and I'll get Robbie to swing by in a couple of weeks and award those two prizes of a Beaver Builder Pro membership valued at $199 each. That's a prize you do not want to miss out on, so make sure you leave a comment under the video and tell us the number one thing you would change about WordPress if you could. Um, next week's guest is Hugh McLeod from Gaping Void. Hugh was recommended to us by Vid Luther from Pressable, and Hugh is a cartoonist who makes art for businesses, and his aim is to affect culture change and uh, improve culture in businesses through his art and his cartoons. Some of his clients include Audi, Microsoft, Rackspace, and HubSpot. I'm looking forward to interviewing him. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the podcast as much as I am. Until next week, I'm Troy Dean. Go Elevate.